Hello everybody, Adam here, and before we get started on Season 4, two quick things. The first is announcing the winner of our competition. Well, we've had more entries to this competition than we've had for any of our other ones so far. Thank you everybody for participating, and I am delighted to announce that the winner of the Force Awakens Beginner Box is Andrea Castle. Well done Andy, I'll be in contact for details to get that over to you. The second thing just before we start going on is this. It is a scary time out there for me, for you, for everyone. Look after yourselves. Try not to give in to despair. Try not to go stir crazy from the isolation. Reach out. We are here and are happy to chat via Twitter, via Discord. You've got friends out there as well. Just look after each other, okay? We're all in this together. Right, on that sombre note, let's get going. You know how it goes. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. You're listening to Force Majeure, an actual play Star Wars podcast. My name is Adam and I'm your host, and today's episode will begin after this informative announcement. Here's a little one I wrote up to explain how to measure things in space and the difference between a unit of time and a unit of distance. Okay, everybody, this is the Parsec song. Oh, space is really big, it is the biggest thing I know. It has to be the size you see for the space for stuff to go. It's far too large for centimeters, kilometers too. We need another measurement, only Parsecs will do. Oh, a parsec measures distance between big things in space. Like just how far your planet is from a big star's fiery face. A parsec measures distance from stars to galaxies. So if you want to measure space, a parsec it must be. Okay kids, I want you to remember that bit because we'll go back to it. One parsec is equal to 3.26 light years. It's 19 trillion miles or 31 trillion kilometers. Make it out mathematically could drive you round the bend. It's a distance of which one astronomical unit depends an angle of an arc second. I hope you wrote that down, that could be on the test. Oh, a parsec measures distance between big things in space. Like just how far your planet is from a big star's fiery face. A parsec measures distance from stars to galaxies. So if you want to measure space, a parsec it must be. So when you're in your spaceship and flying through the black and you need to plot the shortest course to get you there and back put down the purely tape measure, leave rulers in the drawer pick up your calculator, this is what parsecs are for Oh, ah, parsec measures distance between big things in space like just how far your planet is from a big star's fiery face A parsec measures distance from stars to galaxies. So if you want to measure space, a parsec it must be. So if you want to measure space, a parsec it must be. History does not quite record what caused Cinnabal's sun to turn red, or how the hyperspace lane became so broken. But there's a lot of asteroids in the solar system that were once planets, clinging to clumps of gravity wells, those looking to break the Kessel Run record would do well to practice here, providing they didn't like living long. Hi, you're listening to Force Majeure. I'm the Games Master for Shadows of the Jedi. My name's Ed Fortune, and I couldn't run a game without players, so I have some lovely players. Hi, I'm Mikey. I'm playing Daylan K. Rain, also known as K. He's an Aturo striker. His emotional strength is his compassion, but his emotional weakness is his hatred. Hi, I'm Ross. I'm playing Dr. Smex Karam Danelawa, a Syrian consular healer, whose emotional strength is his compassion, but whose weakness is his obstinacy. And uh, my name's Adam, and I'm playing Tychus Barr. He's a Basilisk Guardian Armourer. His emotional strength is his bravery, and his emotional weakness is his recklessness. I think before we start, new session, new game, new everything, let's do some uh, Force and Destiny rules, please. Two light side points from the big T. Two light side points from the medium side C. And one light side point from K. And I'm delighted to give you a dark side point. 
did you roll or he's going no you will have them you will i did in fact roll a <laughs> single single black dot and this is my special d12 that is just like me with a marker pen but still <laughs> everyone's a dark side okay so before we start proceedings our pool is five delicious light side points and one sinfully tasty dark side point it's because you're all terribly well behaved that's why <laughs> Give it about five minutes. <laughs> One of the thing about Kinabal's wonderfully blue desert and very orange sun is how easy it is to see things if you happen to be flying over it. For example, what you can see right now is the meerkats, a bunch of them on swoops, escorting a very powerful swoop-style truck arrangement thing. On it, you can see various teams. It's well manned. It's got weapons pointing pretty much everywhere, and th- there's quite a few of them all ready to kick off. On the back, of course, you can see you can see Lanix, you can see Chadwafan, you can see Dugs, you can even see Drom, all mounting these weapons. Of course, right in the middle are a bunch of droids in cages with restraining bolts on. You swear you can see Roy. You are, of course, in the fire rubble, pursuing, trying to rescue your friend. Party! What would you like to do? This is absolutely outrageous. What are the Mercus doing stealing droids? The Mercus? They're one of the more reasonable gangs and it's not like we've offended them. I could understand maybe if they were snatching some, but to take Roy as well, this will not stand. Kay, get us in close. I'm going to get on the guns. How quick do you want to go with this? Are we doing a strife? We might need to cut them off at the front, slow them down a little bit so we can get down there. Right, Kay brings the fire up all very low and pushes forward one of the big, full-fisted levers to increase the speed. The fire rubble itself starts to vibrate somewhat unnervingly. Um, It really shouldn't be going this fast in uh, the atmosphere, but we need to catch up. There's a shimmer of heat going across. It's it's not helped by the the thick atmosphere, and you can kind of, you get like an orange-red rim going across the, the tip of the ship. Dr. Smith is going to be on the, communication, uh, on the communications trying to get them to stop, surrender their, what they've stolen. Can I have cool tests, please? Yes. Is this for initiative or is this just generally? This is for initiative. Okay. Two success, one advantage. One success, three advantage. And two success, one advantage. Now the thing we've got to do, if that really is Roy down there, we've just got to make sure that he knows when to act, especially if they try to restrain and bolt him. Needless to say, I've put a few wee upgrades into my brother and they're going to have themselves a very bad day, but we've got to get to a point where Roy can act without immediately being taken down by everybody else. His self-preservation protocols must be kicking in. Even if it's not Roy, we need to rescue those droids. We absolutely do. I'm not having them taken away. It's practically slavery and that is not something I'm going to stand for. Just because they're constructed doesn't mean they're not people. And Tychus, as he's running down to the guns, makes the sign of the cog. Nice. It is uh, party direct first. Do you want to make your way down to the guns first, then? Yeah, Tychus makes his way down to the guns. He's not very good on them. This is, you know, he's person portable weaponry is his forte rather than big ship guns. But, you know, it's a similar principle. You point in the direction of bad people and you pull the trigger until the bad people stop. Okay, what are you aiming at? Are you aiming at the truck or one of the outlying swoops? To be honest, what we want to do at the moment is slow them down. So I'm not even necessarily aiming for them so much the warning shot across the front line of them to try and get them to stop if you see what i mean to to shoot in front of them and bracket them in so they have to stop or scatter or slow down the truck my concern is if i aim for the truck and miss or something goes wrong or it's rigged it might well blow up the droids and he doesn't want that so this is hopefully something we can resolve i say peacefully reasonably peacefully because the mercus up until now were not a swoop gang that i had any issues with so I'm aiming to bracket in front of them, really. Okay, give it a go. Uh, the difficulty is... What range are they? Um, they are medium range. So it's two purple. And only two green. I don't have any gunnery. Would anyone object to me spending one of our many light side points? Not at all. In which case I'll spend a light side point to begin with and upgrade my pool. So I'm a green and a yellow against two purple. And I'm going to aim for a manoeuvre for a boost. That is one success, one threat. Okay, can I have your damage, please? Well... Um, I was aiming for in front of them 
so I don't know if it's if it's actually damaged their things or if it's just kicked up lots of dust in front lots of dust in front that's more it was more for um, an environmental warning shot rather than targeting the actual bikes so um, they do swerve in the direction you're trying to herd them into okay but the threat is is that it seems to cause them to panic or just move faster and suddenly there's a bigger boost okay as they start moving much faster cool cool that seems fair I'd like to add what they're doing to you know, to my negotiations at this point, saying, please stop, we're going to keep shooting at you until we, you know, until you stop for us. Okay, so are you trying to communicate via radio or are you just shouting at them? I'm trying to communicate by, by channels, by radio. Okay, but I mean by a, by a loud healer rather than... Um, what kind of communications things have we got on this ship? So you've, got, than... you've got a communication system, so you can try and get onto the communications. That's what I was trying to do, oh, yes, okay. signal. So what sort of role are you intending to make? Would it be a persuasion or persuasion or coercion? Probably, well, co- yeah. Coercion or uh, negotiation seems to be the thing to do. Uh, I'm better at negotiation. Negotiation, it is then. Difficulty uh, it would be two. It would be two. Are we suggesting that because we just fired a warning shot, that adds a boost? Uh, go on, yes. I think in four seasons, that's the first time I've actually asked for a boost die of any kind. Oh, we have a triumph. Woohoo! That might be all we've got. Hang on. We have a failure and an advantage, but we also have a triumph. Yeah, so no success, but a triumph. Right, so you can't talk to them because there's no success, but what would you like your triumph to be? I would like to find out whether Roy is on board that vessel. Uh, you can get a lock on Roy, so the, his transmitter system has power. Right. And it's definitely down there. Yep. But not only has he been rest- restraining bolted, yep. but he's been turned off. Oh, dear. And helpfully, it tells you, because it's... The display is a bit haphazard, but someone has written very carefully and very ha- fine hand what the various things mean, so you can figure out quite easily. Right. Peeling off slightly because Titus didn't use the right sort of tape, but, you know. Roy's definitely on it. Criffers. I'll get us in close. And we've got an advantage left, I think, as well, haven't we? Did not get a triumph We, we did. You got an advantage as well. Maybe pass that as a boost on 2k for the piloting test? Yep, that sounds good to me. Okay. It is them to go. Mm-hmm. So there is there is a flurry of activity. They they seem surprised. Like there's there's a bit they're shrugging. Doug shrug in an incredible way. <laughs> by the way, you can you can see a Doug shrug because mostly they're all arms and legs. But there's a shrug and they shoot you with the um, big guns. It's just a heavy blaster on the back. Yep. And they give it a good try. You're a medium range. Mm-hmm. This is where we get to do exciting spaceship combat. So they attack. Yes. They definitely hit you. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it dissipates across the shields. Right, okay. So there's, there is a crackle, and it's the first time you've seen the effect. That blue lightning effect that's on the hull, yes. that's what happens when you get hit with the shields as well. So it really looks like you've been hit by lightning. Now that is cool. It's not supposed to do that. But it does it anyway. You know, I'm, I might not necessarily know much about repairing starships, but I do know an awful lot about making things look good. Okay, just for future reference, stop getting the ship shot at to make the ship look good. I mean, I figure that if we... I'm not intending to have the ship shot at, but if we're going to be shot at, we might as well look stylish, right? I'll be honest, I didn't know they worked, so... More faith, my friend. How we go? Your turn. So what speed are they going at? They're going just on the edge of two. All right, towards so three. we need to increase our speed. And my plan is to pass them, because as a starship, we should be able to go quicker than them. So pass them and kind of stay in front of them, but not try and nudge them anywhere or anything like that, just, just to get past them so we, potentially, so we have a better better shot. Now, the the guns, oh, actually, strike that. I've just realised that um, the fire apples turret is on the top. So passing them is probably not the best idea. What we need to do is be very low so Tychus has a line of sight. So I'm going to bring the ship in very low across the sands, maybe about 10 feet off, increase the speed, and match their speed. So we're we're matching them at two. While he's doing this, he's focusing on the power inside him, and he is essentially committing his force die into his agility. He's, he's, he's basically making himself a better pilot by turning off his targeting computer, if it would. So he's going, the, the ship is going very low and quite fast in a place where it n- wouldn't necessarily or shouldn't necessarily go very low and quite fast. So what happens is as you flip, because of the, the engine speed, yes. the, the sand starts scattering everywhere. Yes. I'm going to spend a dark side point to increase the difficulty. So what what is the difficulty? So it should be free... 
and I'm going to flip one of those purple to a red. Okay, so and what's, that's what's happened here is because you've uh, caused all the sands to, to flip up, the charbon bats who are buried underneath the sands, waiting to eat prey, have all been woken up. So you have a swarm of horrible bloody batty things uh, getting in your way. Okay, so I would also like to flip a light side point to uh, turn one of my greens into a yellow, which means we have a massive four yellow, one green, one red, and two purple. Okay, go for it. Did you factor in a boost dice? And a boost dice. Okay. You'll be surprised to know that that's not as many successes as I would usually expect in such a massive roll. There is one success. Uh, it's also a triumph. And four advantages. Nice. So, with the advantages, I would like to uh, dodge the bets, as, as one would do, stay nice and low, and I'm assuming that Tychus is going to go next. So I have put him in a very fortuitous situation. So basically, they are now right in his arc of fire. He can get them dead to rights. So how many advantages do you need? If you're going to go next, how many can I give you? Uh, I think you have Palamon. Alternatively, you could spend that triumph to upgrade my shot. Yeah. To turn my, one of my greens to a yellow. Uh-huh. Then perhaps two advantages for boost and the other two advantages to have... Ooh... Let's just give them all to you. Let's make your shot really good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, we're going to upgrade your um, your dice and also give you a load of boost. Grand. Okay. So, the ship is now zipping along at the level of, essentially, a pod racer. This massive, great, big starship just coasting dunes very quickly. So, I will add to the narrative that because you have been going so quickly and so fast and where you are out from... You are heading towards the shanty town behind the newly re- discovered city. So this is about to get extremely dicey as yeah, you're about to start knocking over market stalls and cabbages everywhere. We may need to get a little higher next go then. Okay, so I am going to spend one manoeuvre to aim a cold shot at the engines of the truck. Okay. I'm then going to use a second manoeuvre to aim, again to continue the cold shot. So the first time you, you aim with a cold shot, rather than getting a boost die, you get two setback die, but you're targeting that specific area. The second aim manoeuvre then reduces that down to one setback die, because I'm taking more time lining that up. So my final dice pool, I presume they're still medium distance away at the moment? They are. So my dice pool is one green, one yellow, four boost against two purple and one black. Rather disappointingly, that is four advantage, but a failure. So I don't hit the um, the engines, but for those four advantage, what I would like to have done is peeled that truck off from the rest of the convoy. So it's managed to avoid my shot, but to do so, it's had to break and then swerve and take some evasive manoeuvres. And its escorts have not been able to slow down in time, so it's it's separated out a little bit. I, I like that, actually. So what they've done is they've peeled off and at such a speed that they're going to have to... It's going to take them a while to loop back round yep. to provide support. So they're effectively, for the next couple of rounds at least, out of play yep. because they've peeled off. And they haven't actually had a chance to, to shoot because they were all busy defending. And I'm happy to burn all four advantages on that because that seems like a pretty mighty yeah. impact. So if I can go next, because what I'd like to do is use my action to turn into a manoeuvre and we're going to increase the speed um, to free, which will allow us to take evasive action to make them more difficult to hit as I peel off and we follow that one truck, is it? One swoop. Swoop truck. Yes. Cyber truck. If you think of it more as a kind of souped-up version of, you know, Jabba's skimmer? Yes, yeah. So make it half the size, make it faster, and essentially give a swoop big truck platformy thing. Filled with droids and cages. Filled with droids and cages. In the back, in, like, nets mostly. Hold on, he says, and we start banking wildly. Because there's gravity, it goes a little mad. But that is, on evasive actions, it's already a, a hard test. Do you need to, or do you want to add anything to that? You evaded the bats, you're very low to the ground. Yep. Uh, I'm going to start adding in um, 
basically tend to getting knocked over, so I'm going yeah. to put in one setback die. Okay. I would like to not... I'd like to basically... This is What I want to do is not knock anything over. I want to make a sharp turn and move away from them. So, I know I shouldn't be arguing on this side, but more setback dice so I don't knock over any sense. Okay, take another setback die. At this point, you start to note that there's also bits of buried city that you yes. can see. So, are we racing back towards where the Razor's Heel was? Yes. Cool. Excellent. There's an enormous crater where the Razor's Heel once was, and essentially there's big black holes that are pits that lead into the city, and they are little tents and shanty towns. And if you go further towards the Razor Heel, where the Razor Heel is and where the Spire is, you can actually see like proper temporary accommodation. Yeah. But where you are is where people have stopped, set up shop to examine a thing that they've seen. So the fire opal banks sharply to follow this swoop. Um, we have two successes and one fret. So I imagine in uh, atmosphere, it really shouldn't bank this sharply. But that makes it more difficult for them to hit us because we are making evasive manoeuvres. Okay, um, apply the threat of strain if you don't mind. Yep, surely. That seems very reasonable. Yeah, something pings off the side of the ship. There's a um, knocking sound and the refresher flushes. (laughs) As in there's someone in the toilet who's like, Excuse me, I'm trying to use the facilities in peace here. Ah, yeah, it's one of the Lego (laughs) mobs. Hector? Okay. I I actually have a list of things that can happen randomly of the ship, and one (laughs) of them is the refresher just automatically flushes when it fancies it, whether it needs it or not. Okay, so we're trying to stay as close to this ship as possible. Because I am, we're now at uh, speed three, and it's only going speed two, we've gone into close range. Right? Yes. Um, so it's them. Uh-huh. So um, the Doug, who's on the gun. Yeah. Whilst they only have, because it's close range, difficulty of one normally, because of my successes, is now difficulty three, because we are trying to dodge their weapons. Very nicely played. He swings, because it's turned round at this point, he puts his full body weight onto the gun, it swings round. The blaster itself, it's just a heavy blaster. Yeah. And it's quite an old-fashioned looking thing. It's almost a cannon, as it were. Like someone's just basically taking two very powerful hunting rifles and lash them together. It's not not much. And this is where I look at the wall and go, He peppers you with shots yes. from the cannon. They wildly miss. One causes the shields to splash, mm-hmm. but without actually causing any damage. Yes. However, as he pulls the platform up, the actual back of it tips, so crates start falling off the back. Okay, we may have to dodge these, we're quite low. Yeah. And it's back to party. Ross? Okay, I'm going to be doing a fire discipline action, because that's going to allow us to analyse their tactics, work out where the best place to hit them is. It's quite difficult. It's an automatic free purple. Do I want to use a light side point? We've got four. Go on, I will upgrade a light side point. I think we have a success and one threat. Uh, no. Have I got that the wrong way around? Those so are failures. You've got a failure and one advantage. Ah, yeah, they all say we don't do anything and get anything out of that. <laughs> no, but you've got an yeah. advantage, so you can just give me a boost anyway. It's just it's more boost and, and more I stuff. I imagine yeah. it's probably quite difficult to keep an eye on them to work out what they're doing, because K is wildly veering the ship around, and we're not in space, we're in atmosphere, so there is gravity, and it's just all over the place. Yeah. So the thing you are able to surmise Mm -hmm. is that they don't appear to know what they're doing. Okay. And they're acting wildly, which, unfortunately, you don't know how to compensate for that. Yep. Except to tell Tychus that they appear to be acting wildly. When you're actually looking at them through the scanners, you you can see that they're all... They don't look like the most disciplined of gangers, and they all look... I mean, it's hard to tell because most of them are quite small, but you think they're quite young. You also surmise that Kay is used to flying star fighters rather than star ships and doesn't <laughs> realise that you're not as strapped in as him. <laughs> <laughs> you say all this as though, you know, the doc's used to sitting in the you know, in the bit looking at a scanner and, you know, analysing ship tactics. He doesn't do this bit for a living. We're doing a barrel roll in a second. I just want to point out. <laughs> Clunk click every trip, guys. It's what you're saying is, use my advantage to buckle in. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, I don't know. I mean, strangely, the Lagomorphs have found netting and are just nuzzling into the netting. 
th- they seem fine. The rest of you haven't remembered to put on seatbelts. I but think, I think have. it has been established that Tychus Clunk clicks every trip, <laughs> and that has been going back for a long time now. That was yeah. That, that he was taught that by Roy at a very young age. There, there'll be a song. I'm fairly sure. <laughs> I imagine the gunnery station actually has a place to, to yeah. clip into as well. Well, yeah, because Tychus will have put them in because you yeah. clunk click every trip. Yeah. For community value, the dock has not fastened his seatbelt. Well, you've clearly not heard the song. As soon as no. you get Roy back, I will ask Roy to sing you <laughs> the clunk click every trip song. And there's the song for episode two. I just, I just got this image of you buckling into the, get sitting down in front of the gunnery station, and it's just being in this little light flashing. <laughs> Fast the seatbelt's light is on. Boom, boom, boom. This is your captain speaking. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Road safety is important. Um, so it's back to the top. <laughs> so back to the top for party. Now we are kind of we're slowly keeping up with it, and at the speed we're going at, we're going to be level with it this next go. Mm. So rather than us having a go, because I don't think you'll be able to, you certainly won't be able to shoot it with your top turret while we're essentially on top of it. I think what we might have to do is go back to the doctor who potentially could try and talk them down again. Ooh, more negotiating. It's up to you, but that's, that's, I think it's going to be more useful. Yeah, I'm taking a quick glance through you know, rules and things that I've you know, developed since the last season, and I haven't added any range whatsoever to any influence roles using the Force. I think that's not going to work over a channel either. Is that fair to say? <laughs> <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> it depends if you're on the cost of the bar or not. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say we're not. I don't know if range is one of the upgrades. Well, no, range is a potential upgrade, but I'm assuming that doesn't work over a radio signal. No, it does, yeah. I mean, it has done in the past. Okay, so I'm, in, I'm within, you know, short range of the comm unit. They're presumably within short range of their comm unit, so... Well, so we're, that, we're at short range planetary scale of them, so yeah. it's... Ed, you're the GM. Can we use the force to help influence the nitro, which says, stop, we want to, you know, get our stuff back. Well, I'll tell you what. Shall I go next and move us in really close and that'll remove that query? Yes. What we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves as close as possible to this ship. I mean, literally, that if we were feeling saucy, we could jump between them. Okay. We're going to drop our speed so we're matching them, and we're just going to be right near them. It's probably not the most sensible thing to do, but we're giving it a go. Um, also, we're dropping down so we're level with them, so um, Tychus can shoot them as well, if he so wishes. Tychus is feeling saucy. Oh, excellent. We're certainly getting it so we can jump across. So, what difficulty would you like? For pulling level to a moving vehicle yep. whilst they're in a swoop truck and you're in a starship. Yes. Three. You have the boost from Ross's advantage before? Excellent. I'm not going to spend a light side because I think Tychus is going to do something ill-advised and we might need them. We've got three. Yes, I know, but we're doing all right. I'm going to spend a dark side. Okay. As you are pulling up level you notice that there is a gap between you and it's a gap in the sand. Yes. So you're actually starting to get to the the bit where the city is revealed. Yes. And you're just on the edge of it. So you are essentially on the edge of what could potentially be a massive cavern. Ooh, very Indiana Jones. Right. So the dice pool, (laughs) by the way, is three yellow, two green, two purple, and one red. Oh, and a boost. Our panning shot, as we see the two ships getting close to each other, we pan out and you can see this, it's almost jet black, but crystalline blues and purples of this ancient abandoned city that has just opened up into the sand. It is a chasm. If you see what I mean, you can see bits of skyscraper and that sort of thing. Okay. So that roll is two successes and four advantage. So the successes pull us really in close. We're essentially inches away from touching. And the advantages I'm going to give to Tychus, I think. <laughs> because I just get this feeling you're going to do something really silly. Yeah. Almost as if I'm both brave and reckless. Uh, Ed, Yeah. how many manoeuvres for me to get from the gunnery seat to somewhere I can jump? I don't know whether or not I can open the canopy of the guns and leap off that, or if I need to run down to basically the side door and and out that way because it depends on whether or not I'll end up having can we spend a light side to be able to open the canopy yeah can we spend a light side to be able to open the canopy you can mm-hmm. I'd like to point out that the canopy is not supposed to be open like if you open it from the inside it pops off yeah if you open it from the outside mm-hmm. it's a faster escape only you could move objects from the outside so I'll let you spend a force point to do a party trick so you're literally using the force 
Okay. So, do you need me to roll my force move, or do you? Yes. Want... Okay. Uh, I will try a force move as my maneuver to open it from the outside, so we don't lose the canopy. Okay. I got a dark side point. I am going to use that because this is cool. So I take a strain and I flip a light side point to be able to use that. So as one maneuver, then yes, I I reach out with the force because I've been getting a little bit more practiced, and pop that up. For my second manoeuvre then, I get out of the chair and I attempt to leap over. And this can only end well. Yes. And I imagine the dark side makes sense because they're stealing Roy. Yes. And there's a lot of anger and anxiousness. There and, and absolutely just... is. He's very, very angry about this. So you've, you've pulled the access hatch from, yep. the, from the outside of the ship, which it's clearly not designed to do because, you know, why would you ever do that? And then you've catapulted yourself out. Yep. So that would be an athletic roll. Yes. What difficulty? Oh, I'm going to have to say two. Okay. And I'm going to flip a dark side. To upgrade that to one purple and one red. Okay. I'm going to flip a light side point to upgrade my athletics pool. You remember all the boosts that you had. And I have four boosts from K. So my pool for this inspiring leap is two green, a yellow, and four boost against a purple and a red. So rather than it being more difficult to get him across there, Kay's kind of got the idea what Tychus is going to do, especially as there's a light that flashes onto the cockpit that suggests that the uh, the gunnery canopy is now gone. Yeah. We're going to have to remember where it is, because we'll... Well, no, because I used the force to open right. from the outside. It's not gone and flipped off. The access right. hatch has opened rather okay. than it being yeah. ejected. So we're seeing the access hatch light has come on, I've tipped the ship slightly to allow him an easier way around. So usually leaping from a ship to ship would be really difficult, but we're making it... We're basically, I'm basically giving him a push. You're making it possible rather than impossible. I raise it up a bit to give him a little bit of a... Flip him a little bit off. I like to think of it more as there's a whole bunch of rainbow lights just appeared on the cockpit and just go, awesome thing is happening now. <laughs> give me back my droid, you criffin slaver! And Tyke is going to attempt to leap over. What are you playing next week? Now... I'll preface this by saying there was an awful lot of blank dice that came up there, but for the first time in a long time, boost die have come through. That is one success and two advantage. Okay, so it's not the smoothest of transitions. Mm -hmm. I firmly recommend you spend your advantage on not taking damage from falling onto the craft. You can do something else if you want. Okay, yeah, well, I spend uh, my advance then to not take any falling damage, so I kind of cat fall in through the window. So as you cat fall across and out, you, um, at the last minute, grab the bars on the skimmer. Yeah. So you actually, you almost miss. It's really dramatic. As you fall across, you almost miss. But that's useful because you can grab the actual vehicle itself, the, the kind of the baffles on the vehicle, break your front fall, which allows you to basically do a somersault onto the platform. Wouldn't you have a convenient droid to fire you some sort of melee weapon and you could look really cool? I've got my Vibronux. Now, what I was going to wonder is, instead of landing on the platform, can I land in the open cab? Because yeah. I still have an action. What okay. I'd like to do for my action is go uh, and put it on the handbrake. Okay. <laughs> Noink. Okay. And just try and bring it to a skidding halt. I'll worry about all the other people on there with guns in a moment, but for now I need this thing stopped. I'm happy for you to do that. You lean in and the whole thing breaks. Can I have another one? Let's roll, please. Of course, can. And the difficulty is? Uh, that's going to be two, because you haven't clung clicked. Oh, no, not this time, no. Uh, if only there was a song. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to upgrade this. I'm just going to do the flat roll. So it's three green versus two purple. Two success, one advantage. I've slammed on the handbrake. It's screaming to a hole. I've not gone flying. For my advantage, can one of the gunners have forgotten to clunk click and they go flying off and rolling behind us? Well, it's funny you should say that. So none of them were secured in when you stopped it. I have just sat here and rolled their athletics. <laughs> I wouldn't waste that advantage on that. Right. -o. At this point, there is a solitary Doug who has not catapulted off into the chasm that's below you. If you look down, you can see them grabbing onto things and moving onto things and this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, the Chadwell fan is fine. Maybe, maybe not. It's quite dark down there. But yes, uh, there is a solitary Doug. Then can I, for my advantage, pass a boost die on to when the doc rolls, uh, when he rolls what is presumably going to be a social test, as I turn round to the driver that's in the seat next to me and go, Good night, son. How's your day going? <laughs> <laughs> so two things happen. The driver <laughs> stares at you in absolute horror. Because it's not so much a handbrake as in you're turning off the engine, 
It's still moving. It has no power. It's going over a chasm. Ah, well, in that case, could I use the advantage to it not go over a chasm? No. (laughs) (laughs) Damn you! Curse you, Fortune! He frantically smiles in that way that someone's just been told that they're about to be shot, grabs the controls, and very controlledly, in a very controlled way, crashes into a spire. The thing itself does a whole dip and head first smashes into uh, some sort of skyscraper rebuilding. Uh, there is a crash, and you are now well done. You're now in the ancient ruins. I'm going to tell this guy to surrender. I think we've you know, we've made good on our threats at this point. I'm going to use the influence one to, to make him believe at least that we're not going to do him any harm. Or shall I negotiate? What do you think? <laughs> Use your force powers. Use your force powers. That's why Use they're your there. Force powers. Yay. And remember, you get a boost die to the discipline test. Gets yep. an opposed discipline test, it, I see. It is, open, it is opposed discipline. So I'm going to influence. Well, I'll decide what untruth based on how many successes, I imagine. Get a boost die. Yep. He could do with a friend right now. So what's his discipline? Uh, his discipline is two. Two. So it's just two purple, is it? He's, he's, he's not trained. He's not trained. Two success and a dark side point. Right. Are you spending on the dark side point? I have to if I'm going to do the thing. Uh. Hoist on my own petard. So yes, you're going to spend that dark side point? Uh, yes, I shall spend that dark side point, because this is not a particularly nice use of Dr. Smack's powers. Okay, so you take a strain and a conflict, and we flip a light side point over. Which is always nice. Okay, so what does that look like then, Ross? How does it feel? Tell me what you're doing and what you're saying to him, please. I'm insisting that he surrenders his vessel. I mean, obviously, I don't know how many uh, people on board have just you know fallen out or become smears on the inside of the hull. Or anything, but at this point, I'm, going, I'm asking him very politely, and in, you know, we're going to ask you to surrender your vessel, or we're going to start using you know, more difficult, you know, things. We're going to make it even more difficult for you. So, a voice crackles over on the comm, saying, "We're going to make things more difficult for you." He goes, "Help me!" Well, the nature of the thing is, I'm allowed to put him in a certain emotional state, or make him believe something that's not true for about five minutes. Okay. Well, so- it's a dark side, so it's going to be something, mm. something negative, and I think he's quite scared right now. Yeah, I'll do anything you say. I think will be his response. Okay, release the droids. <laughs> it's, it's the, it, it, releasing the droids will be better for you than not releasing the droids. He pulls a lever on his vehicle. The back of the truck releases. We're too close to the canyon, aren't we? And it starts sliding down the back of the skyscraper. So the back bit, yep. the box of crates, starts sliding down the skyscraper. And where does that go? Is that going into the canyon? That's going into the canyon. I'm going to break the ship a little bit. I'm really sorry. Okay. That's fine. I can fix it. We're back up to the top. Can I go first? Yes. Yes, you can. Though I would like to go second because I, I have a supplementary. Okay. It's okay. I feel this has gone terribly badly and I'm just gaping while I'm waiting for my, de- for my turn. That was not a good decision. <laughs> okay, so essentially, just to, just to explain it decently to the, the listener. Yes. What this vehicle has done is it smashed into an abandoned, ruined building. Yes. Yep. Its back was hanging off. Uh-huh. He's released it. The abandoned room building is at an angle. Yes. And the obsidian black glass, whatever that is, yes, has now got. Imagine the back end of a pickup truck style arrangement. Yes. But a skimmery, so it's got ropes and everything uh-huh. on it, just scraping all the way down. Okay. Sparks everywhere. If we do nothing, is Roy and the other droids are they in peril and likely to fall into the chasm? So you don't know how far down the chasm goes. Okay. I would like to do something foolish. Okay. So I want to, with one of my manoeuvres, reduce my speed to one, because we were at two before. The other manoeuvre, I would like to, very sorry, Doc, flip the... um, (laughs) Yeah. Flip the ship so that our wings are underneath where the droids are sliding down and basically use the ship as a cushion fully expecting to scrape along the um, along the, the, the skyscraper, causing us some damage, but basically stopping their descent into the chasm. Okay. It's a really foolish manoeuvre, but we need to save Roy. What stupid difficulty would you like for that? That's definitely difficulty three. Okay. You've got two setback die, because it's quite narrow. Yep. There, is, there is room to manoeuvre but you are literally threading the needle here. Yep. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm not trying to dodge the, uh, the, the... I don't mind getting us a little bit damaged. 
out of this because I'm saving Roy at the expense of the ship, which we can fix. I, I understand. Yeah. But there's a difference between scraping yeah. and crashing. That's lesson one in the Imperial Academy, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> so it is two setback. Okay, that's fine. Anything else? That's it. Okay, I'm not going to use a light side point because we're running out of them and I feel we might need them later. But if you die, then you can't spend them again. So That is true. But only myself and the doc will die. So, you know, Tychus and Roy will be able to use those light side points. We get to make new friends. So, that, I mean, it, it's... Season qu- two is going great, isn't it, so guys? <laughs> that is three yellow, two green, two setback and two purple. Okay, so understandably, we got a few fret because we have been scraping quite significantly against the uh, against the, the side of this skyscraper. But for success. Okay, that's very good. So K, just you hear over the comms. Sorry, Doc. And there's a clunk as the ship flips over onto its onto its back and drops twenty five feet to stick the wing underneath the sliding cargo. And to slow the descent. Uh, for success, I will let you clip the landing gear so you can grab the bag okay. of crates. Right, but we are upside down. But you are upside down. <laughs> I have a very difficult use of what he could do with that threat. I'm fairly sure that it might damage the ship, this threat. Yeah, so that's going to go into hull damage. Does anyone mind if I go next? No! <laughs> so we're, we're out of structured play. What I'd like to do is jump out of the cab slide down because I don't know whether or not because you said there was, there was quite a few netting crates yeah I don't know if Roy is in a separate thing with Bob or not all of the cargo is currently on the fire wobble okay dangling very dangerously mm-hmm. looking at where you are you are in a dimly lit building of some description the only light is coming from behind you getting in and out will be interesting and entertaining there's also a Chadra fan who looks very distressed. Quite frankly, he is not my problem. He has brought this on himself by stealing droids. Uh, what I would like to do then, because now that Roy is not in any immediate threat because he's on the ship, I get out of the cab, I nod to the Chadra fan, I draw Clementine. Roy's on the ship, not so much in the ship, though, is Yeah, he? he's on the ship. For a given value of on the ship, he's not on board, but he's, yeah, well, he ho- Hopefully, hopefully th- this will work out then. So, yeah, I get on top of the cab, draw Clementine, nod to the Chadra fan, And uh, Clementine's had a couple of upgrades, and underneath um, the main barrel of Clementine is a grapple gun. Remember when we were, we originally had like the Ascender stuff when we were on the Razor's Heel? That's now been modified into a proper reusable grapple gun. So I'm going to take aim and fire that to secure an anchor, and then use that to abseil down onto the ship to get to the bag with Roy. Okay. So the difficulty is, it's two purple dice that's the standard difficulty for firing this with my aim it's one green one yellow two purple and a boost i got three success a triumph and a threat blimey to anchor that uh, into place and then make my way down on top of the ship so what i'd like to do if at all possible for the uh, the triumph what i'd like to be able to do is get down to the bag where, where the crates are uh, essentially with the with the cargo and then turn on roy's magnetic feet so even if that crate starts falling off, he'll be all right and can hopefully slide out through the netting because he's quite spindly. Maybe something like that, or I can get down and open the ramp so we can then start pushing the cargo thing onto the ship. I would recommend opening the ramp. I'll do that back. then, yeah. You are able to not only secure yourself on the top, but you're able to swing round. You're a little bit loose because you're reckless. You're yeah. kind of very loose with the abseiling, yep. so you descend extremely quickly but that works in your favour because you find yourself at the ramp. Now, it's at entirely the wrong angle. It's upside down. But it pooches out, so how you get it from the wing to the side, you're not sure, but you can get in now. Yeah, and at least I can hopefully save Roy because I'm in the the close vicinity now anyway. Uh, And you're also next to the various cargo strappings and all the rest of it that's at the back of that area. I'm going to leave the cable from Clementine connected up basically so i've got that if i slip off i've still got a grapple thing and and holding clem in two of my arms okay and my upper arms are making the way but it does mean that if the chadra fan wants to escape he can come down the cable as well because i'm not going to leave him leave him to die i'm just not going to actively save him so is um are you connected to the swoop then by the cable i'm connected to the building that the swoop has crashed into okay 
Yeah. So if the swoop f- falls off, yes. I'm not on that. I don't care. Right. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm connected to the building because I imagine that's a slightly. So more now secure. we're connected to the building. No, I'm connected to the building and I'm standing on the underside of the ship. So I can't fly away. <laughs> no, you can't fly away yet. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I can disconnect it yeah. as a as a manoeuvre, but at the moment, no, I'm yeah. stood on the. I get you. And I'll comms in and go. Right, I'm on. Uh, I'm on the underbelly. Excellent flying there, Kate. I'm on the underbelly. Uh, the cargo netting is here with Roy and the other droids in. Just stay here for a minute if you can. I'll try and push him into the cargo bay, and we'll we'll worry about sorting them out when we're in there. Not a problem. The doc picks himself off what is currently the floor, which is formerly the ceiling of the ship. Everything that wasn't tied down is now on the ceiling. I should listen to the song. So I'd like to point out that what you're essentially doing is crashing really stylishly. That's my entire thing. Every landing you can walk away from. What are you doing next? If we were still in the in the turns, what he would do is he would drop the speed down to zero and hover. Because we know these starships can, because that's how they rise and fall. Yeah. It is not the easiest thing to do, hovering a starship upside down but he's going to try and keep it as steady as he possibly while Tychus gets everybody on board the ship. So the only surface you have to hover against, because you need to be hovering against something, is the building. So you've gone from upside down to sideways. Yeah. So I'll need an athletics roll from Tychus Mm -hmm. and a pilot roll to keep it steady. Yeah. Do you want me to roll the pilot roll first to see how how steady I keep it? That might be an idea. Is that what it says? So you have a setback, you have a setback die here yeah. as well. Difficulty is two. Okay. The thing that you've got to remember yeah. is that as you are, so you're activating the the front the retro thrusters yep. to stop you from actually crashing. Yep. You're slowing down the crash at this point, yep. uh, and you're using the hover to to slow yourself down further. Yep. The surface that you're pushing this against is essentially glass. Yes. So it's tearing apart. Okay. You can't make a space omelet without breaking a few space eggs. <laughs> Trashing a few skyscrapers. Exactly. Um, so difficulty two, you say? Yes. Okay, and on one set match. So that's Which I think is very, very generous. Very generous, yeah. Three, three yellow, two green, two purple, and one black. So that is uh, five successes and one advantage. Nice. Very good. So the advantage I'm going to give you is a boost. But I'm keeping it nice and steady as we slowly peel over so we can hold ourselves steady. I don't know if the dock wants to make their way to the cargo area to basically help me get these in. That would be a nice I think that I would do. Yeah. Does the dock want to make an athletics roll though? The dock's going to do what he can. Um, athletics is not necessarily his strength. In which case you get the boost because you're the next person to go. Okay. One advantage boost. How difficult is this? It'll be two. Okay. Whilst the ship turns on its side, it's a constant and a regular speed, so you can kind of ease your way in easier. Bouncing off the walls slightly. One success, two advantage. You've got yourself to the, the, the mouth of the, the cargo hold. Yep. I would suggest uh, one advantage being spent being able to locate quickly and easily the landing gear retraction so you can release the cargo so you can drag it along. And how do you, do you want to be able to find ropes or some other sort of tether? Uh, ropes would be good to At least I'm anchoring myself in case you know, we've suddenly manoeuvres keeping myself attached to the ship, but anything else that will help us guide these guys in. Yo, you could give boosts to, oh, that's to Adam. Yeah. Adam? Okay, so I get one boost from you because you're the advantage is being used to basically get the cargo strapping ready. Get your head's glowing, it's like a handy <laughs> little track. <laughs> <laughs> and you're standing by to release the cargo so they can grab it. Yeah. So my dice pool is three green, two purple, two blue. Two success, one threat. Okay. The threat is, is that on that line, there is a chatter fan. Okay. You are able to pull in the big bag of cargo. Yep. Roy is the biggest thing in this. Okay. Everything else is smaller droids. Okay. They're all in, essentially, it's less cages and more like kind of wrapping. Yeah. As it L- were. Like lobster cages, maybe. I-, I was thinking more like when you go on holiday and you cling film your bags. Kind of, they're all in power off mode and cling film together. Pretty much, they're all they're all cling, people cling film their bags so people can't so oh, you know if know someone's that. gone into yeah. your bag. Yeah. So it's like a cling film with like a wire reinforcement yeah. on it. So it's like one direction sort of wire reinforcement plastic meshing has been put on each of them so they don't move around. I presume they've all probably been turned off as well. Then yeah, easy transport and dragged in. There's a big clump and the dock is ready with the meshing to get it on. Do you want me to take a strain? 
to reflect the fact that as this Chadra fan's coming down the line, I'm not letting go. So we can so we can make it onto the ship, but it, it does kind of tax my arm muscles to hold. If you don't all this kill way. him, take the strain. I will take the strain. I'm not killing him. He comes in very fast. Ever he was using to um, abseil down the line catches fire just as he lands on the thing. Uh, and he hits the floor. Uh, he's very young. I sense a cry from Tiger's of, Oh, Doc, new patient. Yeah. You got a wee one here for you. Wee little space mouse. And I'm going to just <laughs> kick him into the, the cargo hold. Get in there. And you can, I'll cheerfully let you close the doors? Yep. I disconnect um, the grapple hook and, and reel it in as I'm making my way into the, the ship. It comes in just as it closes, if you see what I mean, because you have very little time. Uh, can I have one more roll from K, please? Mm, sure. It's just to turn us back the right way. Yeah. Difficulty is two. Uh, you have an option. You can land. On the side of the skyscraper? No, well, on the... Near on, the chasm. In, in, the, in the chasm. You'll be landed in the chasm. Yeah, let's do that, because there's probably a dog down here. We'll see if he's all right. So that is four successes and one fret. Uh, take strain. Yep. You land on what appears to have been maybe a road at some point some sort of transport line Uh, but you do land firmly and as you dust yourself off as a safe landing uh, where do you keep the holocron by the way? usually in my uh, quarters you you have a bit of a slight twinge have I had something like this before? yeah you think? okay as you land yeah you just go and check it yeah no that's I've changed one addiction to another essentially so I will I'll I land I put the ship in to power down, uh, keep the engines on, but everything it gets kind of ticking over, unclip and walk through, and without interacting with Just the guys... Just in the back of your head that you're slightly concerned about it for some reason, you don't know why. I'll go into my quarters. It's glowing. Oh. I'll leave it there. Ooh. Will the fire opal ever fly again? Will Kay's box ever stop glowing? How angry will Roy be? Will the doc ever get to use those bandages? Will Tychus find something to do with his hands? Join us next time for more Shadows of the Jedi. And before we go, today's patron is Sam Emery. Sam is looking at starting his own Star Wars actual play podcast soon. So welcome to the family. I can't wait to hear what you've got going for us. And thank you for backing the show. And as for the rest of you, we will see you next time. Force Majeure is played using the Star Wars Force and Destiny game system by Fantasy Flight Games and Lucas Books. Our intro music for this season is Unholy Night by Kevin MacLeod, and our outro music remains Suburban Outlaw by Forget the Whale, both used with gratitude under the Creative Commons license. If you like the show and want to interact with us, we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, all of which are at Force Majeure Pod though Twitter is probably where you're going to find us more regularly. If you enjoy what we do and want to support the show, there's three ways you can do that. The first is via our Patreon at patreon.com slash forcemajeurepod. The second is by buying us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash forcemajeurepod. And the third way is by rating and reviewing us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, anywhere where you can find us. We really like reviews. It tells us that we're telling the stories that you want to hear and helps other people find us. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next time.